Billy, what you got? This is a McAlpin Locks and Dan, 10 a.m. recording for Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. We are running six and a half feet on the dam. We have nothing on the upper side and six and a half feet on the lower side. The hydro plant is not running any units at this time. All right, so we just called and checked the water flow with the dam, and it's not what I wanted to hear. It's uh, They're not moving much water at all, and they're not moving it where I want them to be moving it. But it could change later on. But either way, we're going to go fishing this afternoon for a few hours. It's going to be kind of a short trip, but, you know, some of the best trips I've ever had have been those short afternoon trips. So we're going to go make the best of it and uh, see what happens. All right, so we made it. The river's extremely low. There's almost no current. I haven't seen it this low in a long time. And it's actually really windy today, so not much current, a lot of wind. That's gonna make it tricky, but either way, we're gonna do what we have to do to try to catch some fish tonight. I think we're gonna head down the river first, try to catch some bait, and we might even do a little fishing down that way, depending on what we see. It was a pretty rough ride getting down here. It was only probably about four or five miles, but it was rougher out there than I thought it was. But we're down here where we're gonna catch some bait at. There's an Asian carp jumping all around us. I tried to get one to jump in the boat. I couldn't get them to jump. So we're gonna throw the net. I think it's gonna be pretty easy to get us some fresh bait. So we got us some fresh carp cut up, got all the mess cleaned up, and we had planned on fishing down here in this area. But with the wind blowing like it is and not much current, I really don't know what to do. If we suspend fish, our bait's gonna be jumping up and down real bad. I don't really like that. And I've only got one anchor with me. We would have to double anchor to be able to fish. And it, with these waves the way they are, I don't even know if double anchoring would do anything. So I guess we're gonna run back up towards the dam, even though I really don't care for the conditions up there. Like I said, you just gotta make the best of it. Every day is not gonna be exactly the way you want it out here. You just gotta fish the conditions. And who knows, the fish might be biting like crazy at night, so we're just gonna go try it and hope for the best. All right, so we've been riding around for the past 45 minutes trying to trying to find a good spot to anchor up in. All the spots that I want to anchor in, there's just not enough current to anchor with the wind blowing the way it is. The boat's gonna be all over the place. 
And uh, there's a couple spots I tried to suspend fish in. The boat's just jumping up and down too much, which means the bait's gonna be jumping up and down the same. So luckily I brought one bumping rod with me. We got one little strip of current running through here and we're gonna try to drift through this current until the wind lays down. And uh, if the fish are biting today, we should find out pretty quick because bumping will catch them. We may not catch any giants right here where we're at, but we're gonna catch some fish, I'd say. I'm just gonna be using a rod with 65 pound braid uh, a 60 pound monofilament leader and then I got 30 pound line going down to my sinker that's just a average just your basic three-way rig that you would use for bumping three-way swivel and we're gonna put a piece of Asian carp on there to start with We're in five foot of water right now. I only moved a few feet and went from 25 to five. They were just now coming back over that drop off. I'm gonna turn my troll motor on about six or seven. And we're gonna drop this bait down in there. We're actually, I actually should have went up a little farther. We're kind of right in the spot I wanted to be fishing right now, but we're gonna go with it and see what happens. So this is not a big fish at all, but we got him in that current, so he feels like he's 100 pounds, but I can feel him flopping around down there. So just gonna be a little five pounder, but it's a good sign. I didn't, I didn't make it just a couple minutes and he bit. On the silver carp. We actually found us a little calm spot right here with not as much current. It's kind of a little eddy and I just spot locked right here. The trolling motor's only running on about half power and it's keeping it still. And I'm just walking the bait out behind the boat like that. Now, if you hook a big one, you'll have to turn your trolling motor off and drift back to him. But these smaller fish like this, I got enough rod to go ahead and drag them in. Oh. He stabbed you with the end of the rod, didn't I? Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. Just a little four or five pounder there. But he nailed it. He hit it hard, so it might be biting good today. We got a big cold front supposed to be coming in tomorrow, so the fish might be fired up. It's a nice little fish. If it wasn't out of the Ohio River, I'd take him home and eat him. I have ate fish out of the Ohio River before. Probably wouldn't hurt you. Probably better than a lot of stuff we eat from the grocery store, but. There's some rivers closer to home that I'd rather get the fish out of if I'm gonna take them home and eat them. We only got one bumping rod, so we're gonna have to kind of share it. Normally I bring two, one for me and one for him, but left Landon's rod at home today because I didn't think we were gonna be bumping. I just threw it in the boat just in case and I'm glad I did. bigger than that other one. Ah, oh, it's flopping now. Man, he about jerked me out of the boat. I ain't kidding. And ran straight at us. I tell you what, the bigger fish always come to the boat normally when you hook them in current. Those small ones, they, I don't know if they don't have enough power to do that or what, but when you hook a big one, they always run straight up river. That's what he did, but I, he's doing too much moving. I don't think he's very big. He ain't pulled enough to take drag or anything, so I don't think he's a giant. Just a hard fighting fish. He's not that big at all. It's just a hard fighting fish. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a nice fish. I was hoping for a little more, but I mean, definitely a nice fish. He 
see how hard I pulled on him. I actually stretched his mouth out. I was close to losing that fish for sure. A little bit of slack, he would have been gone. Yeah, that's a nice fish. He's probably nine or 10 pounds. He came from the same spot that last one did, so we'll get him back and catch another one. I'm telling you, they feel like giants when they're, they're hitting good they're tonight. Like a 50 pounder. Oh, I mean, yeah. I it almost pulled the rod out of my hand. I know. The second one I caught it hit like that. I mean, just they must get in that current, get a head start, and just take off 50 mile an hour down the river. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that. I thought I had a 100 pounder on it. I'm going to oh, I never did get the trolling motor turned off. I got too excited. I thought I did, but I didn't. These things right here. That's why we love bumping that that big surprise, man. They'll jerk you out of the boat. Try to anyway. I, mean, I, I couldn't get the real one. I mean, it's, look where he's hooked. Oh, there he went. He was hooking oh, me. Yeah, got you now. I hooked him in the chin, but hey, we got to see him. We caught him. I can't believe that. Oh, it's crazy, ain't it? You hadn't got to feel that in a while, have you? Uh -uh. I mean, all these bungee jumpers and stuff talking about that adrenaline rush. They don't I mean, know what. None of it. <laughs> I agree, it's something else. <laughs> what are you doing? Where am I supposed to put it at? Oh. Well, I can't see nothing after taking them glasses off. All right, what size is this one? I'm turning the trolling motor off. All right, I'm is, he, is he shaking? Uh, a little bit when I first got him, but he always oh, shaking bad. Shaking bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if we can get this one in. Oh. All right, so that's number four or five. I really can't remember. Not a big one, but I'm not complaining. At least we're catching something, and maybe we'll get that big one before we have to head out. They're all fun when you're bumping like that. Oh, yeah, it's like about 100 pounds. Uh, they all feel big when they first bite. Now, this is deeper water. It should be more current, too. Alright, so that's another one, but it's going to be the same size. This will probably be our last fish out of this spot. I think we're going to go try a different spot now that the wind's laid down. These are fun on a bumping rod, but I still like them big boys every now and then. Sometimes you just gotta let go of when you feel, when you know they're getting there to start twisting. He just bit the fire out of me. All right, so there he is. He bit the fire out of my thumb. I'm gonna go ahead and get him back. That's a wild one. All right, so we caught a lot of small fish in this spot, but we're wanting that big one before we leave. 
So I feel like we need to move. So we're gonna go down by the locks. We've done pretty good down there in similar conditions as these. So we're gonna, we're probably gonna anchor up and throw some baits out and uh, just sit there and chill for a while and see what happens. So we just got anchored up and I feel pretty good about this spot. We got some slow water on this side of the boat, fast water on this side, and we're kind of anchored right in that transition where it goes from fast to slow. As far as what we're fishing, there's a little bit of a hole behind the boat. Now it's only about 16 foot deep, which doesn't sound deep, but everything else around this is eight to 10 foot. So that's the deepest water around. And I've seen that spot hold fish in the past. So hopefully there's some fish down there tonight. We're gonna throw some Asian carp down in there and also some frozen skipjack that I brought with us. Tell you what, I'm getting low on skipjack. I'm gonna have to go on a bait run this fall or I'm not gonna have any for the winter. Like money in the bank. Have them skipjack in the freezer. We're gonna throw some eight ounce weights and that's the typical rig I always use. It's a three way swivel with a clip, 40 pound main line, 60 pound leader, down to an eight out hook. I told my wife and my daughter that I'd be home about dark. And it's dark now and we're not anywhere close to going home, but they should know by now when I tell them I'm going fishing, there's no telling what time I'll be home. I started changing the line on all my medium heavy rods. Uh, I hadn't changed it in a couple years. Hadn't had any problems out of it. I just figured it's probably a good time to go ahead and change it. And uh, I normally use the 40 pound Andy Monster. I buy a big spool of it. It's just cheaper that way. I've got eight of these medium heavies and I only had enough line to do six of them. So I stopped on the way up here and got some trialing big game. You can get this stuff anywhere. Walmart sells it. It's super cheap. And this stuff's super strong. If anybody's wondering about some cheap line to use, you can't ever go wrong with Berkeley Trialine. It's uh, it's kind of stiff. You know, it's not as soft as some of the more expensive lines. But as far as strength, I've never had a fish break this stuff. It's just super strong. So while we're anchored up here not doing anything, I'm gonna go ahead and spool up these other two rods that I didn't have line for. So a lot of people still ask what kind of reels I like to use. And I've done videos on it before, but I realize there's a lot of new people watching. So basically 90% of all the reels that I use for catfishing are Catmax reels from Bass Pro. I've got some different brands. Like one of them says Browning on the side of it. Uh, you know, they make several different ones that are say different things, but they're basically the same reel. I've got several different colors where they've changed models over the years. But uh, a lot of people hate those reels. I've just had good luck out of them. I like the thumb bar on them. I like the size of them. And then I've got probably 20 of them and I've only ever had one of them break and it was my fault I broke the level wind in it. You know, I've got a couple of Abus back there right now, but honestly, you know, they're gonna last longer, I'm sure, but I just prefer these just for the thumb bar and the price. The main reason I use it. This one's about full. It says they hold the same amount of line as a, uh, it's an Abu 6500, but I found I can get a little bit more on them than I can on a 65. I usually stop right before I leave about a 30 second in between the frame and the spool. All right, so we've been sitting in this spot for about 45 minutes and we haven't had anything but a couple of little pecks. So I think we're gonna go ahead and bring them in. We're gonna move down about hundred yards and cast them back out. There's a little point down here at the end of this island that so we're gonna go check it out. All right, so I went ahead and put six fresh pieces of bait out, but I'm really not, I really don't have any confidence in this spot. I thought it was a little something different than it is, but it's basically all we've got time for. It was on the way back to the truck. Uh, if it wasn't so late, I would have drove on past it and fished something else. But since we're out of time, we're gonna sit here for about 15 minutes. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully there's some fish down there, but 
not a lot of confidence in this one. All right, so just like I thought, we didn't even get a bite in that spot. We sat there about 20 minutes, no sign of life. So we're gonna go ahead and call it a day. Nothing too crazy happened in this video, just a fun afternoon out on the river. And that's kind of what the plan was anyway, just to come out here and uh, enjoy the afternoon on the river. Thankfully, I brought that bumping rod with me. It was just kind of a last minute decision to grab it and throw it in the boat. It's not what we planned on doing, but that's what ended up working in the windy conditions. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. We'll see you in the next one.